good morning good afternoon and good evening recording also started yeah yeah uh, good evening to all of you so first of all i want to wish you a very happy international medical physics day this year's theme is medical physicist as a health professional i welcome you all to a form idmp celebration 2020 IDMP is celebrated every year to recognize the contribution of a medical physicist in healthcare. This year's theme is very appropriate. That is, medical physicist as a health professional to mark the multi-dimensional contribution of medical physicist in healthcare facility to recognize our profession globally. World Health Organization and International Labour Organization recognize medical physicist as a health professionals. In spite of significant contribution, medical physicist. as a profession is not well recognized in some part of the world to create awareness and better visibility of medical physicists globally international organization of medical physics iomp celebrates idmp since 2013 every year on 7th of november the birthday of professor mary curie now uh, like due to some unavoidable circumstances uh, professor madan rehani president iomp has not uh, able to join us uh, virtually but he has sent his wishes for uh, I, uh, this idmp program with through a recorded message so i'm going to play this for you Hello, colleagues from A Form. I am Madan Rehani, President, International Organization for Medical Physics (IUMP). I am indeed so happy to speak to you through this message for IDMP 2020. The nostalgia of the years when I was in your region, having grown up and spent major part of my life in Asia, brings me closer to my roots. When I speak to you today. as many amongst you might know that i was part of the meeting under the leadership of dr k y chong when a form was created in world congress 2000 in chicago i am always happy to see a form progressing and seeing it grow in strength i am delighted to know that a form is celebrating the idmp 2020 and i wish to congratulate the president dr chogle and the whole team for doing the great preparations for idmp it's interesting that medical physicist as a health professional is a non issue in the part of the world which i live now in north america medical physicist is a health professional without doubt in this part of the world i am aware that there are many differentiations particularly in asia like clinician non clinician medical non medical and so on everyone is contributing to the health profession in a significant manner and we do need to be respectful of that contribution we need to aim at reducing boundaries and spend major part of our time in contributing to the patient welfare i wish you great celebrations for idmp in your region whatever best is possible under the current unusual circumstances with my very best wishes and thank you very much thank you very much sir now we have uh, professor arun chogle uh, he's he's currently a president of a form dr arun chogle is a senior professor and head of the department of radiological physics in sms medical college and hospitals former pro vice chancellor uh, rajasthan university of health sciences and dean paramedical sciences jaipur india he has 36 years of professional and teaching experience in medical physics he is one of the pioneer in radiation biology experimental dosimetry in india he is a past president of mp that is association of medical physicists of india currently the president of acom as well as the chair of education and training community of uh, committee of iomp he has served as an expert to iaea and has been a regular associate to ictp for 8 years he has been awarded with numerous uh, fellowship awards mainly iomp idmp 2015 award for contribution in medical physics iomp member excellent presentation award outstanding faculty award 2019 in sms medical college dr farooq abdullah sher e kashmir best researcher award in 2011 and 12 recently he has been awarded as an afom outstanding medical physics 2020 for his contribution to medical physics education research and professional development 
He has more than 110 publications in national and international journals and presented more than 300 papers in national and international conferences. He has been authored, authored to many uh, books. His research interests include radiation biology, experimental dosimetry in, in teletherapy, radiation safety and protection in radiation biology, and radiotherapy, QA and QC in radiology. So now I request Professor Chogle to, uh, to enlighten us and uh, start the program with opening remarks and talk on medical physics in a form teacher. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rajini, for your uh, kind words uh, and uh, my introduction. Uh, dear participant, accept my greetings on behalf of me and a form on this occasion, International Day of Medical Physics which is celebrated since 2013 across the world. I will be speaking about medical physics in AFOM region. In last 20 years after the formation of the AFOM, what changes and how the medical physics has grown. So again, expect, accept my greetings on the occasion of uh, International Day of Medical Physics. And this year's theme is Medical Physicist as a health professional. And as has been talked by uh, Professor Madan Rehani, President IOMP, in his message, that some parts of the Asia, the profession is not yet well recognized as it should have been. And therefore, the organization like uh, AFOM, IAEA, and we all should uh, work in this direction to make and get our dues what we should. As you know very well, International Day of Medical Physics is being celebrated every year on the 7th of November, the birthday of uh, Mary Curie, the greatest medical physicist. And you look at the themes of 2013, the really from medical procedure as the medical physicist, looking into the body advances in medical imaging, uh, better medical physics, education in medical physics, medical physics is providing a holistic approach, Medical physics for patients benefit. It's a medical physics world. And 2020 is a medical physicist as a health professional. So at the center of all our theme is the contribution of the medical physics to the radiation protection, uh, the medical uh, education, uh, the radio diagnosis, radiotherapy, and as a health professional. Now, uh, Though X-rays were discovered 125 years ago on 8th November 1895 and within one year the radioactivity, but medical physics existed before the discovery of X-ray. And in 1814, Jean Halle, and he was a professor of medical physics and hygiene faculty of medicine in Paris during 1795 to 1822, medical physics did exist and he was there, he was a professor. And he said, physics applied to knowledge of human body, to its conservation and to the cure of illness is medical physics. Now, due to the increasing complexity of both treatment and diagnostic equipment, the technological explosion which is being taken place in the radio diagnosis, nuclear medicine, radio therapy, we need qualified, competent, and what we call clinically qualified medical physicist. IOMT statement one, it talks about the medical physicist working in the clinical environment, our health professional, and the need for well-structured, high quality education and training program for the medical physicist is very, very important. And we have adapted to this situation. And in Asia, uh, in AFOM region, number of programs started since 1960s. And they are growing and growing to meet the demands of the medical physicists in the healthcare services. As for the IAEA, to be a medical physicist, clinically qualified medical physicist, you need to have a basic degree in physics or equivalent that is from engineering to do, and then post-graduation in medical physics, and then 
minimum two years residency program under a supervised clinical training or you can come from a msc uh, physics and then uh, academic program in medical physics and you do and then clinically qualified medical physicists must be certified and then this certification should be renewed after every five years or the period stipulated and as uh, we are the health professional there must be a state registration in every country to register as a health professional and as this is a profession continuously growing we need continuous professional development these are the requirement now registration yet few countries in asia have started registration of medical physicists and they are recognized ministry of health as a profession like tunisia korea and some other countries still iaea document which has come at uh, number 25 it mentions about the process of certification should lead to that of registration where a certified medical physician should uh, be registered and a roster should be maintained about it now iaea safety standards which has been uh, general safety requirement published in 2014 also talks about medical physicist as a health professional with a specialized training and techniques of applying physics in medicine and uh, he can be a uh, medical physics in radiotherapy in radio diagnosis nuclear medicine or any other thing with his uh, uh, training as part of it iaea ibss that is iaea radiation protection and safety radiation sources international basic safety standard 2014 it speaks about medical physicist health professional with specialized training and qualified expert in medical physicist mp is they are the health professional so state or government that have yet to develop such mechanism would need to assess the education and competency of the medical physicist so that they are licensed as the health professional eform has recently published policy number 15 wherein guidelines on role of medical physicist uh, within the hospital governance board also has been laid down and in words of professor abdul salam who said the scientists are very happy people because their job is also their hobby and therefore we are the health professional we are the health scientists and recognition of the medical physicist to uh, as an independent health professional iaea and the who they have co-sponsored international conference on radiation medicine it in bonn and in the joint session of iaea and who a joint positional statement by iaea and who as a bonn call has been published and under that action 8f work towards recognition of medical physicists as a independent profession in healthcare with radiation protection responsibilities need to be done and the all member countries of the iaea and who they have got these guidelines these joint position statement so everyone should try with their ministry their government so that our profession gets uh, uh, recognized and registered as a healthcare professional iaea ibs i talked about this thing and uh, as i told in uh, uh, international level organization also has been uh, though we are classified 21 11 physicists and astronomers but in uh, group stating medical physicists are considered to be as an integral part of the health workforce alongside those occupation classified sub group 22 health profession has been mentioned and therefore for all practical purposes health physicists are the uh, medical physicists are the health professionals as per the ilo now asia ocean of federation for the medical physics was founded on uh, may 2000 and it is one of the regional organization of the iomp and uh, second largest medical physics uh, 
regional organization of the IVMP. And we are celebrating 20th anniversary of our founding in 2000. Today, we have 19 member national member organization are member and two are affiliate members of uh, the organization and a form uh, the region that is the Asia Oceana region is one of the largest and it covers about 80 million square kilometer and in terms of the population 4.7 billion amounting to 60 percent of the world population uh, remain uh, stay in this part of the world but this part is uh, a lot of variation in terms of culture social diversity education standards technology uh, and therefore the task is quite different so asian countries there is no binding force like a european directives every country has developed its medical physics program though iomp iaea form is trying to harmonize this medical physics education still the task is uh, uh, very difficult and daunting task and uh, if you look at uh, uh, the uh, regional organization that is the uh, FOM, CIFOM, MEFOM, PEMPO, ALPINE, and EPOM, and US and Canada. Uh, almost we have now into the FOM 9,500 medical physicists. And if you take the uh, into account the medical physicists, what China says is uh, more than 4,000, the number is more than 10,000, making FOM the uh, largest in terms of uh, number of medical physicists in this region. And also uh, to the growing need of uh, the medical physicists by coming 10 years, we have to double the number of medical physicists required. So just I talked about the uh, medical physics in Asia Oceana, diverse culture, social education, and there is a shortage of medical physicists in Asia country because the number of cancer patients are increasing, the number of uh, uh, X-ray machines or X-ray department, nuclear medicine procedure, technology is uh, demanding. Insufficient clinical training program in many countries, fewer qualified medical physicists, or some medical physicists migrate to uh, the European or uh, uh, the USA for the greater uh, uh, advantage things. So lack of recognition of the medical physics uh, is a standard of practice in many Asian countries, though we have come a long way. And if you look at uh, these countries, almost uh, out of 21, uh, almost in uh, 17 countries, we have postgraduate uh, master's program in medical physics, barring except Nepal, Myanmar, uh, Mongolia, and uh, Singapore. All the countries now they have got uh, the medical physics education program. And if you look, just uh, recently we have collected a data on the medical physics education program. Most of the countries, minimum two years, but there are also uh, one year and three year programs are also running in China. And uh, Vietnam, only uh, a bachelor degree program is running because uh, their country requirement is that. Uh, for a master's, you have to be in a bachelor in the same subject. Means to be to do a master's in medical physics, you have to be a bachelor in medical physics, and therefore they have started. And next year they are going to now master's program. And now you look at the number of universities uh, uh, giving uh, imparting institutions uh, the medical physics education in these countries. Almost 106. Uh, institutions or universities are imparting medical physics education and almost about 700 medical physicists every year they are passing out the masters in medical physics program and there was a survey in 2014 the number was just the number of institution was about 60 the number was around 300 so almost you can say about six or seven years uh, we have double fold the number of uh, medical physics students uh, coming out and the institutions also. Now, if you look at the number of the medical physicists and the population of the country, 
you will see that almost about 9,500 medical facilities in this uh, AFOM countries they are working. And with the population, if you see the number of medical facilities per million, Australia has the highest number of uh, 18 medical physicists per million. And the lowest you can see is a Myanmar, where only it is 0.56 medical physicists per million. It varies. And on an average, in the FOM region, it is 2.2 medical physicists per million. I will make a comparison with a different RO of the IOMP. And uh, it is recognized, uh, yes, many countries by either the government or by the accrediting agency, it has been recognized, but many countries it has not been yet recognized. If you talk about the India, partially means people who are working in a medical colleges, in a faculty, Medical Council of India is governing as a health professional, but in other uh, uh, health services, they are not. But yes, uh, this year the bill is coming up where in a health professional, they will be included and they will be recognized as a health professional. If I just compare the number of medical physicists in APOM with the other ROs of the APOM, you will see that uh, medical physicists per million population in USA Canada is 26, for EFOM region is almost 12 because population as compared to uh, APOM is uh, very less, as I talked about 4.5 billion people, 4,300 uh, million population, and uh, it is 2.1 as compared to 26 and 12, but we are better than MEPOM, we are better than FAMPO, better than ALFIM, and as the number of institutions imparting the medical physics is increasing, definitely our, uh, this medical physics per million population will definitely will increase and will cater to that thing. APOM has done a lot and thanks to our founding uh, uh, fathers of the uh, uh, FOM and the earlier uh, president and office bearers, they have established, stabilized this FOM and on the good footing we are carrying forward. They brought out the policy statement. Policy statement one talks about the role and responsibility status of the uh, clinical medical physicists in APOM region. Then this talks about the uh, uh, for education and training of the medical physicists, ethics. So six policy statement has been brought out by the FOM. Now problem in FOM still exists and they are unclear job description, no acceptable certification, job security is problem and the COVID era uh, uh, many uh, medical physicists working in private environment, they lost the job. Remuneration is a problem, Lab, the large variation in that thing. And uh, because of the career advancement, remuneration, this affects uh, the best students uh, uh, to bring it to the medical physics. So what needs to be done? So there is uh, no secret to success. It is a result of preparation, hard work, and uh, we have to learn from the failure and that is what we go on learning from our shortcoming, our mistakes and then try to do better and that is what from your all of your feedbacks and the experiences APOM is trying to uh, move forward and try to improve. Some advice for the medical physicists to expand their horizon beyond the traditional boundaries. What is happening is just if he's a medical physicist in radiotherapy, GTV, PTV or QAQC, he thinks it's only the domain. It is not that you have to start doing a multidisciplinary research team. And when you come out of your own field, interact with the other departments like a pathology or maybe radiology or uh, uh, physiology and other things in the applications, recognition increases, multidisciplinary research program, utility can happen. Network with important researchers of the medical physicists to leave it to learn. Learn from the mentors, from the invited speakers, and from our colleagues. Uh, this is for the juniors, early starter. Interdisciplinary interaction is very, very important in uh, if you're working into the health area. Exercise leadership by leading activities, personal skill, explored by mentor. Fill any knowledge gap. 
because it's a professional course and the technology is changing so fast. So you have to always and always uh, uh, try to fill the knowledge gap. Publication and mastering the newer skill is very, very important to remain relevant into this healthcare services, space to share doubts, insecurity for receiving advice, support for members to face personal and professional mishap. That is what also senior people should mentor the juniors. Juniors should have the mentors and this process can go into professional. As Dr. Rehani was talking about and that you can see, unfortunately, we have lost two members. One is our uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Berry and uh, Alan Berry and uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Inamura. We lost actually, uh, but they were the founding fathers uh, of uh, Afom, which was formed in May 2000. And uh, in the next conference in World Congress in 2000 in Chicago, we became the RO of the uh, I O M P. And uh, now, just with this small thing that, yes, uh, the medical physics is growing, education is growing, but again, we have to be competent, quality has to be maintained with this thing. This is a rare picture just we got last time uh, in uh, uh, Chile, the ICMP. Uh, he is our past president, Imin Wu, immediate past president, uh, Taiso, who has been awarded IDMP Award 2020, myself and the next uh, president, uh, Eva. With these things, again, wishing you all very happy International Day of Medical Physics and assuring you that there is a huge growth into the medical physics career and it is very, very rewarding. Only thing is that you have to be remain relevant to your profession. With this thing, thank you very much for this opportunity. I stop sharing. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Afom region is indeed improving in terms of uh, recognition to medical physics as a profession. And uh, we are very uh, hopeful to that, that uh, it will turn out to be best. So uh, once again, thank you very much, sir. So now we have uh, with us Professor Eva Bezak. Professor Eva Bezak, uh, in, in wake of time, I'm not going to read the full introduction, but the only thing which, which can be used to introduce her is that she's an inspiring medical physicist to all medical physicists and a kind of a role model which all women medical physicists can look up to. So I'll, uh, I'll give the platform to Professor Eva Bezak to enlighten us uh, with her views. Wonderful. Uh, Rajnik, can you confirm that you can see my screen? Yeah, sure. Yes, yeah, certainly. It's, 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 okay, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for having me this afternoon. And I will change the topic somehow, because I will not be talking about medical physics as such, but I will be talking about how to inspire and grow young leaders who will eventually take over from old people like myself. Uh, why tall poppies? Uh, poppy is a flower and sometimes one of those flowers can talk well above the rest. Uh, I have taken this symbol because uh, some of the advice I'll be using here is based on the book written by two Australian female authors about confidence at work. And also in Australia, we have science awards that are called Tall Poppy Awards that try to encourage younger Australians to follow in the footstep of outstanding science achievers and also to build a more publicly engaged scientific leadership in Australia. And leadership is extremely important. While there may be a few of us that are born leaders, Many will have to be given some advice, mentorship, and even take some training to become effective leaders. Leadership requires a significant mindset change, and it is associated with the development of divergent thinking. 
When you graduate from the university, you are often taught to follow processes, protocols. You learn how to solve equations that lead to a single methodology and single answer. To become leader, you have to master much more complex level of thinking where multiple pathways, answers, methodologies are possible. So you will have to gradually develop a divergent thinking process that you generate creative ideas by exploring many possible solutions and evaluate them in terms of risk, cost-benefit analysis and similar. So how do I get there? I really need to know what it takes to become a leader. To start with, one needs to build confidence. Create a vision where you want to be. Find a mentor, even if this mentor is from a different department or organization. And don't expect the huge changes from the very beginning. Change your behavior slowly. Anticipate that there will be obstacles and problems and be prepared to deal with them. And create a very positive state of mind. Every wall is not a wall, but can be a door for you for another opportunity. Uh, the survey that the Australasian College of Physical Scientists and Engineers ran a few years back uh, identified very important role that the role models fulfill. They have set up a good example. They assisted younger physicists with career pathways and decisions. They enabled younger physicists to believe in themselves and provided enthusiasm. For women, they also showed examples how you can balance work and family. Some of the quotes, my mentor showed me how to maintain perspective, balance and humor, to be persistent, keep moving and keep trying, to maintain personal standard. Create positive attitude. Look on the bright side. Learn about optimism. Use positive self-talk. If you are always doubting yourself, monitor that behavior and change, code yourself and say, stop, I'm not thinking negatively. Accept compliments given to you gracefully. Be positive with others. Change your language. Reactive language is something that is sort of preventing you from achievement. Uh, responses like, there is nothing I can do. Uh, he or she makes me so mad. I can't, I must, I, I have to do that, if only. Will not progress you towards leadership. Move your... Smilings. Set will give up with the obstacles, while the growing mindset will persist in the face of obstacles. A fixed mindset will see effort as fruitless or worse, while the growing mindset will see effort as a path to mastery. One will ignore the criticism, the other one will learn from criticism, and so on. Core element of confidence is something that we call assertiveness. So you have to learn to be confident and assertive and say it like you mean it. Assertive people ask for what they want. They say no to things they do not want or they cannot do. They initiate conversations that take the... They meet and greet people confidently. 
they are able to speak out at the meetings. They are not just the silent participants at the meeting. They present their ideas and they are able to defend their opinions. So be bold enough to use your voice, brave enough to listen to your heart, and strong enough to live the life you have always imagined. During your career pathway, there will be a lot of criticism that you will have to accept. Take it on the chin. The more confident you are, the less the criticism will affect you. And you learn to differentiate between constructive and destructive criticism. Accept that appropriate criticism will improve you. Always act professionally and do not take offense. Ask for feedback. And also be constructive the way you give criticism to others, to younger colleagues. Make an impact. Learn how to influence others. Some of us who are already in leadership positions, we have sources of influence based on our expertise, or we are in a position of authority, we can control resources, we have people skills. At other levels, you can work on turning your ideas into actions. You can sell your ideas to your superiors and learn from influential mentors. Advertise your talents. Make yourself visible, learn your skill, practice networking, become a committee member, take on extra responsibilities. You cannot wait to be discovered. And there are many reasons for networking. So each of us really has three major circles of networks. One is operational, and these are the people who can help you to get your work done. This is often happening in your workplace. It is internal structure and it's focused on the task. All of us have personal network. This is our family and friends and people who can help us to grow personally and professionally. This can be often external and these are people with whom you share common interests. Then you need a third network, strategic network. And these are people who can shape your future goals and direction. This may be internal or external and is very future orientated. You have to be careful to choose your personal network carefully. As Jin Ron, a motivational speaker said, you are the average of the five people you spend most time with. There is a revised version of this saying, you are the average of five people you spend most time with, including yourself. Therefore, consider the people you spend most time with can elevate you as much as they can bring you down. So once again, choose your networks carefully. And seize the moment. Be proactive and make things happen for yourself. Don't grow old waiting for perfect conditions. Stop procrastinating. Make it happen. No pain, no gain. To achieve anything significant, you have to accept a degree of risk and discomfort. Challenge yourself, move out of your comfort zone. Separate real risk from the imaginary ones. Mentally rehearse steps to reach your goal. Take action, do not wait for something to happen. Determine steps, plan your steps to realize your dream and then achieve your dreams. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, uh, thank you very much for this uh, very informative talk. Indeed, we required this kind of leadership guidance because we are lacking it um, in most of our educational program, what we get for medical physics. So I hope in future, um, all the universities and all those kinds of uh, educational platform will give space to this kind of guidance as well. So uh, uh, thank you once again, ma'am. So Hi, now, uh, now we now we have um, in our program we were supposed to have Professor Taiso. So uh, he he was a past pres uh, past immediate president of a form, but uh, due to unavoidable circumstances, because um, his mother is not feeling well and uh, is in uh, America right now. So so.
instead of uh, presenting uh, it physically, uh, we have uh, his uh, video presentation, uh, uh, which we can share with you. So uh, let me introduce uh, Professor Tai Suk Hu in a, in a proper way. So in 1919, Dr. Tai Suk has been associated with Department of Biomedical Engineering of the Catholic University Medical College in Seoul, Korea serving first in position of professor 1919 till now and now holding the director of research institute of biomedical engineering and director of the advanced research center for medical physics in catholic university of korea he is now a past immediate president of uh, a form and a past immediate publication committee chair of iomb dr su is known for his work with his colleague on the development of radiotherapy planning multimodality imaging and in particular the radio surgery system Having established his academic career in Korea, Professor Su has served as an editor and editorial board member of many international journals in medical physics. During his leadership of Korean Society of Medical Physics, he was well appreciated for his many contributions, including his promotion of medical physics in Asia, Oceania region, and he organized the World Congress on Medical Physics and Biomedical Engineering in 2006 in Seoul and a form in Asia in 2002, 2006 and 2011. He had been to various important uh, positions professionally as in president of a form, IMPC, the RRC chair, um, president forum for uh, radiation medicine and sciences, publication committee chair of IOMP, president Korean Radio Surgery Society, vice president the Korean Association of Medical uh, protection etc and we have one more good news to announce that he is a winner of IOMP IDMP awardee 2020 so uh, now we have uh, double celebrations for us so now I will go straight and uh, share his message with you Uh, good morning. It's my great honor and privilege to be here at this special event as a speaker representing the NCO CNF Federation of Organization of Medical Physics. Uh, first, I would like to thank AFON for organizing this wonderful meeting and inviting me. As past agent president of APOM, uh, today I wish to share with you the role of medical physicists in the era of a high tech technology that uh, allowed to this year's APOM IDMP program. The technology of medical physics has been rapidly developed. Therefore, the role of medical physicist is very important. Since the uh, radio and the Madame Curie discovered the X-ray and the radio, many radiation medical devices have been developed. Ultrasound, PET, CT, MRI, and radium, QR60, mini and radio surgery, etc. Currently, the state of art technology has been utilized in medical physics, uh, such as new technology of functional imaging, multimodal imaging, and uh, biological treatment. New technology, such as uh, 3D printing, artificial intelligence, and big data are also implemented with the current technology. So, the qualified medical physicists are very needed to manage this high tech and medical physics. The role of medical physicists was well defined in April policy statement and many. WAPM teacher report. The main role of medical physicists is to provide a high standard of safety, 
clinical physics service to patients and health care people. Medical physicists need to have enough knowledge of high tech in medical physics. First, I would like to talk about the history of the technology in medical physics, uh, followed by the issue of the qualified medical physicist. Uh, this diagram shows the to the development of medical physics technology. The technology has been developed from conventional technology to state-of-the-art technology. And recently, uh, using uh, new technology, uh, such as artificial intelligence, big data, etc. At first, I'd like to show history of technology in radiation therapy. In the beginning, 2D art was common. Uh, after that, 3D conformer and intensity modulated radiation therapy by MRT and 4D RT image guided radiotherapy. And recently, Particle game uh, became important RT modality. Uh, Brachy therapy also has been developed from manual technology to remote uploading, combining special brachy therapy technology such as IMBT, ISBT, and many other techniques. Okay, let's see the history of the medical imaging. Uh, since the Avenger discovered X ray, uh, many X ray radiography has been developed. And also, our field developed the computer tomography and 3D CT and 4D CT. And ultrasound and MRI, and there are so many Nobel Prize winners, and uh, positron emission tomography. So, a lot of the many new technologies have been developed in medical imaging areas. Multimodality imaging, high resolution imaging, and functional imaging, and molecular imaging and metabolic imaging and virtual reality imaging, etc. So let me show some uh, example. As you see in this figure, using multimodality imaging, especially such as CAD and CT and PET and MRI, we can uh, see the region and normal structure. Uh, very clearly, we can also see the uh, functional change <clears throat> in the brain MRI imaging uh, caused by smelling and power. Molecular imaging is very useful to find out molecular change of early stage of cancer. Uh, recently, a field motion. Combining radiation therapy equipment with imaging device are used in cancer treatment. New technology uh, representing post industrial revolution have been uh, implemented in many areas, especially the technology of 3D printing. AI and big data are commonly used in medical physics field. This slide shows some current research in our lab using 3D printing, AI, and big data. We developed a customized boards for electron treatment using 3D printing technique 
They also developed AI-based RTP system using AI and big data. So, as we uh, overviewed, many technologies have been developed in medical area. The qualified medical physicists who have knowledge, enough knowledge of high tech in medical physics, are very required in clinical physics area. So, next, I am going to talk about the qualified medical physicists. So the important guideline for the education and training medical physicists are shown well in the document of bone call for action. The bone call for action was suggested in 2012 joint conference between IAEA and WHO, which was held in both German in 2012. There are 10 main actions, especially a number of four actions is closely related with uh, training and qualified medical uh, physicists. In order to reach our goal, medical physics society uh, should pay particular attention to the training of medical physicists in the situation of implementing new technology. Now, I would like to share with you some of some work for the qualified medical physicists done by Medical Physics Society. IOMP and APOM made great effort to improve the status of the medical physicists. IOMP provides easy online access to medical physics journal and library for the medical physicists in developing country. And IOMP and APOM published a policy statement and IOMP initiated IOMP accreditation manual for the standard education and training program. IA uh, initiated IMPCB for national and individual certification exam. So IMP also encouraged the internet uh, medical uh, initiated the International Day of Medical Physics IDNP event to promote a medical physics. We still uh, need to collaborate with many medical physics communities uh, for better qualified medical physicists in the future. However, there will be many challenges because of the different situation of medical physics in developing countries. Let me show some examples some uh, work uh, done by uh, medical physics society. Uh, this is in our library, which is supported by WHO, are very useful for the medical physicists to improve their knowledge and then to use uh, journal or some report, uh, any kind of uh, data. This April policy statement provides useful information uh, for becoming qualified medical physicist. IULP accredited graduate medical physics program for three universities in South Korea last summer, according to IULP accreditation manual and IAEA guidelines. I am PCB certified national certification board for individual medical physicist uh, certification in collaboration with IMP and IAEA. 
IMPCB operated to certification board in South Korea and Hong Kong in 2015. To create awareness and the better vis uh, visibility of medical physicists globally, International Organization for Medical Physics celebrates International Day of Medical Physics, IDM, since 2013, every year on 7th November, the first day of a Professor IMQ. This special event is very nice to encourage all the medical physicists over the world. As an April present, I joined the special IDMP virtual meeting, which was organized by IEA in 2016. The theme of IDMP 2016 was education in medical physics, the key to success. I would like to show some slides used in the uh, IDMP 2016 meeting. The background of education and training on medical physics in April is so diverse. Various states of medical physics and shortage of medical physicists and lack of recognition of the medical physics standard of practice. This table shows the status of education, training, and accreditation certification in eight home countries. Uh, because four years have already passed, I think this table should be updated. As you see in this table, the status of medical physics was so diverse in AFOM making. So in conclusion, uh, the medical physics technology has been so rapidly developed. We need qualified physicists who have enough knowledge of high-tech technology. Therefore, medical physics Society should make various efforts to improve the status of medical physicists. The role and status of medical physicists in the Asia region has gradually improved, as can be seen by its increasing recognition in society. However, neither the government nor the public has yet recognized the importance of medical physics and the necessity for accreditation. I believe that a well-prepared strategy and a strong action plan are crucial for the able to move forward. Thank you very much. <clears throat> We are uh, very thankful to Professor uh, Tai Sik Chu for making it possible for us to have his recorded presentation, uh, presentation message in this critical time also. And congratulate him once again for uh, a firm IOMP IDMP Award 2020. So now we have with us Professor uh, Hasin Anupama Azhari, Secretary General of FOM. Let me introduce her. Dr. Hasin Anupama Azhari is a chairman and professor of Department of Medical Physics and Biomedical Engineering, Gono Vishwavidyalaya University, and Dean Physical and Mathematical Sciences, Gono Vishwavidyalaya. She has academic experience of more than 15 years and got many clinical training in radiation oncology, diagnostics, um, radiology from Germany, Italy. She has published more than 60 research work in national and international journals along with many books. She acts as a reviewer to various national and international journals and supervised many students with a BSc project, MSc thesis and PhD thesis. 
she has organized many national and international conferences on uh, about medical physics professor dr azhari received international day of medical physics award 2018 for a form an outstanding medical physics and multilingual dictionary uh, outstanding medical physics award in 2019 she was a project coordinator for bengal uh, from bengal translation of e encyclopedia of medical physics and multilingual dictionary and terms a project of iomp from 2000 to uh, 2015 currently she is the executive member of asia and pacific region owsdw italy general secretary of form associate member ictp member to various other professional organizations one of the very key important note about is that she is the first woman Uh, medical physicist in bangladesh having masters in medical physics became chair in one and only medical physics course in bangladesh in bono university she has been able to create position and recruitment rules working with directorate of health services and ministry of health in bangladesh in in short version her whole life is more more a kind of a service to medical physics profession in bangladesh so now i invite um, professor anupama azahari to uh, come and enlighten us with the uh, her views so rasni is it yes here yes, is visible ma'am okay thank you rasni for your kind words and now i'm thankful to arun and eva and uh, to professor tesu everyone to have a very nice presentations now we i am just i will speak on what is the team theme of this idmp 2020 that is the medical physicists as a health professionals so i hope everybody are, are doing some celebration in from their organizations and this is very opportunity for us we meet one day and talk many things about this so i am just going through that is have you seen the the previous speaker slides and also the uh many things we need to know why we are calling the health professional what is our role what should be in future and what should be our duties to give a better health care for patient benefits so you see here whenever we say medical physics we cannot forget the physics and engineering otherwise we do not have this modern health care system from the 18th centuries we see the discoveries of x ray radioactivity electrons polonium and radium to which we are now here so now we are called medical physicists only for behind these inventions and we should not forget for the main thing is the mother mary curie for the discovery of the radiums now in the 19th century we were looking many things that we how we can to the production of these radio isotopes so you will see here the cyclotrons and from when the electro uh, first linac is used in for electrons in 1947 the clystrone is produced and not only that for the non ionizing radiation which is we are also concerned for the non ionizing radiations the basic of enema also this discovery and study has been done by stelly blotch and edward purcell and the last show shows from this invention now we are working in this so we should not forget the basic things from which we are here so on this all the radiology and all the radiotherapy equipment their technology their behind this physics and engineering and for this we are working very smoothly nowadays now our not we are only though we are thinking that our sub fields only for radiotherapy imaging and radiologies and these things but we are extended in the right box of the field you see that stay in the powerpoint that some kind of overlapping some things do that with the biomedical engineering you see the physiological measurement computing telemedicine also we are now using in med medical physics so at the once we are just over uh, confidence that this physics and medicine through which we are now become a medical physicist this i think everybody you have seen in the imp website we are this is um, uh, in the from the uh, 1965 till 2015 the growing trend of the medical physics number but in 2020 what we have seen in our 
platform is in number is increasing for the each uh, countries and this tells us that how important and what we are roles in the responsibilities also we you see that in aku is the second regional organization of the IOMP and it has so many medical physicists compared uh, but we should um, increase the number in comparison to our populations and also to give the effective and quality treatment and Rasni also said and we all know we are very lucky that ISCO international standard classification of occupations in 2008 has declared medical physicists as a health professional under the group of 22 health professionals and we are thankful mainly IAEA, IOMP and World Health Organization for their collaborative efforts. We are now designated as a health professional in ILO. These are the disciplines what we did now know and we are working here in a regulatory authority in nuclear medicine in diagnostic radiology and also the radiotherapy we're working in different kinds including intervention and radiology where it is the mandatory medical physicist cannot uh, uh, must be meant in international radiology they must work but here when we see the surface we see that more than 70 percent people are working in the radiation therapy it is the survey from aapm in 2002 and 15 percent from in in the radiology so you see here that many main work in radiation therapy and more confined when we see that it is there are many activities clinical academic research administrative regulatory product development and about 70 percent works done in the clinical activities so besides this besides this what we are more challenges we are now doing in the healthcare that is when we are thinking of the radiation whether it is ionizing or non-ionizing we must be think of its safety use is quality use is optimal use and consistent use and and this everything where it is this is the applying of the principal physics through which we are thinking to do something more challenges in the medical physics so everybody you know where are the participants and we all know that our daily work we have some daily works that is quality control, dose calculation, treatment plannings, then when it comes for installations, then acceptance commissioning. But besides this, we must not forget our research and development opportunities. That means we have to think because the vendors uh, do this higher technology method only with the help of the medical physicists. They develop new therapeutic and diagnostic procedure. Also, they investigate and this therapeutic and diagnostic outcome we are now using these machines so invention to diffusion till all every aspects we are acting as a key personnel for the healthcare system now the professor Taysuk in his uh, videos he shows these things we heard now in this recent times that's ai big data 3D printers, uh, machine learning, deep learning. Actually, these are coming day by day. I think in the world country, how we can uh, integrate these this, uh, new methods in our radiotherapy and radiology systems. Already, I think everybody knows one machines have come in a, in a variant that is known, it was using an AI, but there are some uh, limitations on many things, but they have started to using e, uh, AI in the radiotherapy. Here you see that already in research and many uh, countries research is going on with the fabricated 3D printers. They are producing fabricated different types of phantoms, thorax, pelvic, head necks, and also the immobilization devices in medicine. Now, 
we must know that in radiology from the 1950s, the AI has already introduced in some of the centers and it uh, started not only from acquisition to up to the diagnosis, coronary uh, angiography diagnosis AI is using. So this is not the new because when we see the inventions and first use of the Linux and Cobalt 60, all the 1950s times, so we have everything, but now we should be run in a proper implemented array. So our main thing is we should now the, for the healthcare, for better outflow, for time saving, we have to work with the involvement of the radiologist. And also this is our additional responsibility other than daily routine work that we have to know about these new technologies methods using AI machine learning witness we have to investigate and we need to know our role should be more expanded with in these times. Now this corona pandemic so we also not in the home we are healthcare professionals every aspect of healthcare is affected by corona so cancer is not an exception you see in the world health summit in berlin the iea summit which is in a round table virtually it has been done where iea director general rafael marino grossi has said thanks to recent technological advances radiotherapy is now more precise and effective than ever before with fewer side effects and less time needed for delivery. And their main things was this, this current crisis in COVID time. So cancer care professionals, so we have to adapt the way to do the good, provide services and opportunities for fast track innovations with forging the new participations. And on this, in this COVID time, we also the different organization of medical physics. That means IOMP, AFOM, EFOM, many IEA do many guidelines to disseminate their COVID-19 pandemics, what we doing in the hospitals, in radiology centers, everywhere. What will be the, our role? How we can save ourselves, but we must not stop the patient care in this COVID-19 pandemic. It gives a complete guidelines where we can know and we are using everywhere, every country is under the ACU region is using these guidelines. So here you see everywhere they are working in nuclear medicines with policy makings in radiation therapy, in the lockdowns, we are also starting in the long lectures. Of course, Afun is doing every webinars. So no, no one is now stopping. Wherever in the physics of radiation therapy. So we are doing what we are working as a team, as a for as a healthcare professionals. Here also some pictures you see. Now, I must say, I, this cancer is actually the hidden epidemic. So at the World Health Organization, it sh shows that for the high income fund countries in from 2010 to 2030, the number percentage of increasing is not so much, but you see in the low middle income countries, it is increasing in 2030, it is about 42% increasing. So we are the health professional. We should not forget what is our role and how we can prevent. So we can say that one motto, because many countries in our form regions do not have medical physicists, but have medical physicists, but not recognized as a health professionals in their government level. We do not have qualified medical physicists. Already, uh, Professor Owen shows that how we are doing the qualified medical physicist on the help of IMP, IMPCP. So when there is a no qualified medical physicist, we are, should do, do not have the quality treatment. So we should, as a now we are health professionals, so we have to know how to make our positions, how to make our qualified, how to make this quality treatment 
to combat the cancer. And the thing is, uh, uh, Eva has shown very clearly that the global network system. So there are, she shows three type of things. This global communication, because they are, technology is continuously upgrading and technology, we, sh we should not uh, take it alone, all these things in one brain. Yeah. So we have to communicate everyone and through this webinar program and many things, physical training, online training, offline training, how whether we can make a more communication with different countries, peoples, so we need these things. Global communication is the one step further to do as a being a qualified health professionals. Second things we have should think, but the new things we can do using the, this modern uh, the studies, AI, and need to do more research so for the better precision and accuracy of the treatment. And also, must this this is the role of everyone to motivate the younger generations to see it. And without this, we cannot go leave the world. So this is one of our responsibility to motivate the younger generations. And for this, this year, IDMP is celebrating in many more organizations. I'm giving some of them that are from DGMP, different institutions, MP, BMPs, many countries are Yes. And this is our role that to keep give our message to all the level, not only our members, non-members, public, for the awareness, because cancer is not defined in a specific locality. It is given anywhere. Maybe I can be affected, anyone can be affected. So this is our main should be motto this IDMP through. This IDMP will give everyone that we are health professional, we are for the patient benefits, and we should do something for a better quality treatment for our patients. So this, last of all, I must say that knowledge leaves no regrets, except for radiation. I wish I would never messed with that. This is the Medicare Europe. For her, we are here and we respect and we always memorize our things. And when anyone is invented something, there is a vision. So we should complete these things in the terms of in our health professional side. So lastly, this is the COVID time. So whatever we're doing in the health professionals, we must think that there is a, we don't know the, what will happen in futures but we should maintain the social distance and washing hygiene because for the ourselves also for the patients as a health professionals so thank you healthcare workers for fighting covid-19 thanks thank you very much ma'am uh, for such an informative talk indeed we required a clear vision for um, progressing in our profession and to take it to the greater heights. So uh, thank you once again. So now we have, uh, we, we want to have a session with the IDMP award, uh, awardee 2020, but uh, due to un, uh, unavoidable circumstances, Professor Tai Suk cannot be with us uh, even virtually. So now I invite Professor Arun Chogli to uh, read his message uh, on behalf on behalf of Professor Tai Suk to all the audience. Uh, and is it visible? Is it visible? Yes. Yes. It yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you, Rajini. Uh, as you know, uh, dear delegates and participants, that uh, IUMP has started IDMP Award since 2015, and every year from all the regions of the IOMP, the awards are given. And the procedure is that the president of the RO submit three nomination uh, with all the biodata publication contribution to the awards and our uh, honors committee of the IOMP. And uh, they independently assess uh, uh, the nominations 
and out of that one nomination is awarded we are very happy that professor tai suksu has been awarded iomp idmp award of 2020 for his great contribution to the afom he remained for two terms as a secretary general of the afom and then president of the afom not only that thing he was a publication committee chair in the iomp and he has contributed very heavily and under his label uh, able guidance in korea the medical physicist uh, physics has been very nicely stabilized and recently iomp has accredited three universities for their medical education program in korea and this is because of efforts of uh, professor tai suk su unfortunately because of the circumstances he is not available in korea and could not join us directly but he has sent a message to be read out by me to the afom member which i am going to read it here dear afom members and my colleagues this is the message and the thanksgiving from professor tai suk su i am very much honored to become the awardee of iomp idmp 2020 award first i would like to extend my gratitude to professor run chogle president of the asia oceana federation for medical physics afom and afom executive members for nominating me as one of the candidates for this international day of medical physics idmp 2020 award i would also like to thank international organization of medical physics iomp to select me as 2020 idmp awardee he further says for the past 20 years since the initiation of afom in 2000 i have truly enjoyed working for afom with all members it was enjoyable to work as the chair of publication committee of iomp for 6 years i would like to thank all the former afom presidents and afom members for their great contribution to medical physics also i am grateful that i cannot share this moment with two of my close colleagues and the former presidents professor barry Alin, whom we lost last year, and Kionari Inamura, whom we lost in 2017, who passed away. I would like to also thank my colleague at Catholic University of Korea for support and Korean Society of Medical Physics for organizing World Congress 2006 and AOCMP in 2002, 2006. and 2011 and also in 2006 with the world congress the ocmp was club finally i would like to thank afom excom and afom members to organize this wonderful idmp 22 event i look forward to make continuous contribution to afom thanks you very much professor tai so 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 this is a message he has sent it for to be read and communicated to all the afom members and participate with this thank you very much charanjini and uh, a great thanks to professor tai suksu also that uh, he made us uh, everything possible for us in at the last moment also in spite of such a critical uh, situation in his family so now we are heading towards uh, a, a small question and answer session in which we can have a live discussion and a very active one we are hoping for a very active one now may i request um, professor eva bezak and professor anupama azahari to join us uh, with a video okay i think you can continue yeah so uh, I think uh, 
Professor Eva may join us in a few minutes. So my first question is uh, from uh, Professor Arun Chogle. Is it good to implement the minimum universal education syllabus for medical physics globally? And what is the role of accreditation for medical physics education in a form region? Yeah. Now, as you know, that technology is uh, very fastly growing. And I told that we need clinically qualified medical physicists who are competent in a area like radiation oncology or radiology or nuclear medicine. And therefore, the IAEA, IOMP, has brought out a syllabus and that is available and also FOM is trying to harmonize that syllabus because technology is the same across the world and we need very competent people to handle this technology. Therefore, harmonization and the minimum implementation of the syllabus is very important. And already IAEA has uh, uh, given out the publication, IOMP has uh, uh, endorsed, AAPM has endorsed those documents, they are available. And second question is regarding accreditation. Accreditation is a process by which a, any educational, if it is an educational program, is it abiding or following the minimum standard of education, the quality of the education, the training of the education is in consonance with the required in the industry, in, by the hospital, by the regulatory authorities that to be seen. And I would like to tell you that IOMP has started the accreditation of a medical physics education program and already we have accredited three programs in Korea and Masters in Medical Physics program of ICTP is already accredited and renewal of that thing is going on. Because of the COVID, we couldn't do it that re-accreditation is happening soon and many more institutions are coming forward to get their medical physics education program accredited by IOMP. The IOMP accreditation will give you the visibility and also the credibility of that program and the participate who are attending and who are involved in the education should carry forward, should take this forward and get the education program accredited by IOMP so that credibility and things come. Similarly, IMPCB has started accreditation, certification of certification boards in the country and where there is no certification board, they are directly certifying the medical physics uh, physicist as the certified medical physicist so that they can work or they can move from one place to other place. So these are the important things the IOMP, IMPCB upon has started and you should take advantage of all these things. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, now we have uh, one more question from um, Professor Hussain Anupama Azari. Uh, what is your opinion regarding the recognition of medical physicists as a health professional in a form region? Yes, thank you, Rasni. Yes, we need it in a form regions. Uh, I think many countries already recognized, but most of the countries are not recognized as a health professional in government level. I think so. this with these animals are the main power or energy to do the th things. They have to be more active. They have to contact because they are working. I, I know there are many in Nepal, in many countries, they are working in the government hospitals. So they should know they are taking as a medical physicist through vendors or anyway, because when they uh, purchased uh, hospital machines, 
we know that without medical physicists, they cannot install or an acceptance and commissioning is not, cannot be possible. So this is the chance of a medical physicist to contact through their hospital directors, administrations, to go to the government level. Because I have very, uh, because uh, in our country also there is for many bureaucracy problems, you know, in many countries it's same like this, but we should not forget these things and we should have uh, like uh, inconsistency because if we want this we can do this so I will ask everyone as a medical physicist we should go more further more stronger more stronger voice to the government to be as a health professional as ILO already recognized us. Uh, Rajni, you are is online so just yes. please put question in there then I will comment what uh, uh, Anupama has talked about because she's traveling I think and kindly she has made herself available. Uh, so uh, welcome again Eva ma'am and we have one very interesting question and um, I am also particularly very interested in asking this particular question that you are very active um, uh, as a research group member in Australia regarding radiation biology modeling uh, sort of things but as in uh, if we talk about the real situation in Apom region most of the hospital do not have such kind of facilities especially within the reach of a medical physicist to do some kind of a radiobiological uh, active research or intense research, intense research so i want to know your views how you made it possible for yourself and for your research group to indulge in such a intense radiobiological research as a medical physicist ma'am you uh, you are not audible I think it's cannot. Uh, Eva is not audible. Eva, can you unmute? Yeah, now yeah. She did it, I think. Okay. Eva, can you listen? No, I think. Okay. Yeah. So when it, she can take up the question again, I think she was traveling. Yeah. Uh, so just I want to add up what uh, uh, Anupama has talked about and the question you put uh, regarding uh, recognition as a health profession in uh, uh, Asia Pacific region. And uh, Anupama rightly said it is the professional organization. Uh, Eva, can you now? No, it's not here. Uh, no, the voice uh, is breaking. Right? It's not coming. Okay, just give yeah. me one yeah. second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's coming. Now coming. Now it's okay. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, coming very back to the original thing, the, it is always very hard to combine research with the clinical busy department. But as I was mentioning before, no pain, no gain. Uh, it would be really up to the leaders in the department to identify priorities and um, talk, establish collaborations both with clinical colleagues and with the universities to enable some time for research to be conducted within the institutions. Clinicians are often very interested. Manpower is a problem. And hence the link with the university is extremely important because then you can get on board uh, potential PhD students and master's students whom you can guide and mentor to conduct bulk of the research. For radiation biology, you can do experimental work that requires quite a lot of uh, know-how and laboratory equipment. But on the other hand, modeling these days can be done with uh, you know, desktop computer, lots of the softwares are available as shareware, whether it's XNRC or GN4. And that way you, one can do radiobiological modeling research in a, even a laboratory poor department and still be able to conduct the research. But this does require planning, determination, and identification of some work power for example, in terms of students. Rajni, I hope that helped with your question. Yeah, thank you very much, ma'am. 
So now I request all our uh, young uh, medical persons to gear up and open their uh, thinking horizons and look for other uh, departments for multidimensional research if you want to be a, a research leader in the future. So now I can uh, now we can continue with Professor Arun that he, we were talking about something. So we can continue with that. Yeah. So that is what I, I it was a continuation discussion of uh, Anupama, which she has started. So it is a role of uh, the professional organization. Your NMO, that is a National Medical Physics Organization, your country, has to be very, very proactive to take up the issue with the government agencies. Now, fortunately, we have all the document. ILO has recognized medical physicists as a health professional. IAEA in a BSS has recognized as a health physicist. IAEA and WHO, the bond document, the look what they have brought it. There is a, medi a medical physicist as a health professional. The WHO document which they have brought out, there is a, uh, the mention of uh, the health professional. So we have to take all these documents, prepare a good memorandum and a solution and the approach to the health authorities to make this thing and that lobbying and everything has to be done. So basically the members and the country NMOs has to be very, very active. I will tell you one example. I was looking at the data and uh, as rightly said in Opoma, almost about 75% of the medical physicists work in radiotherapy and hardly 10% and some countries no medical physicists in radio diagnosis. Why this is so? Because in radiotherapy, it is a mandatory requirement of a medical physicist to uh, installation, carrying out and everything. But it is not there for the, in a country I'm talking about, for the radiology. But if you talk about the Indonesia, they have brought out the national regulation and Ministry of Health, making it mandatory that medical physicists are the health professional, first thing. Second thing is that all the X-ray radiology department must have the services of the medical physicist. And you will look at the distribution of the medical physicists in Indonesia. Almost 60% are working in radiology and 30% in radiotherapy, more on radiology. So this is we, and as Eva has talked about, and you are talking about the research, we have to discover ourselves. Nobody is going to come to discover you are uh, something like that. <laughs> step out of our uh, uh, ring, work hard, and uh, multi-departmental things you have to do, then only it is possible. We have 10,000 medical physicists working in a form region. Number is growing. But if you look at the publication, look at the participation, it is very poor. Even some of the NMOs, they do not update their website. They do not respond. How can you expect the things? Because unless and until you put your stake, nobody is going to give you the right. And therefore, it is very, very important. And sometimes I will say, if there is need to snatch, also we should do to get our right we are not begging. We are the medical health professional by law, by act. And that should be uh, recognized in a country by country's law. It is not a European Union like uh, which is there. So you see, once they make a mandatory, every country has to follow and already they have done it. It is not in Asia such thing. So every country, NMOs and the influential medical physicians must try do this thing just by uh, uh, saying that nobody is recognizing, nobody is going to recognize you, that is very, very important. And these kind of lectures, like Eva, what she talked about, how you should make your presence fail, are very important. And research components. See, if you just work a daily, you will become a clerk. 
like going to the office or in bank, your bank is closed, we come home, that's all. It's a professional thing. You cannot all the time your brain work and they should go on publication, presence film. So that is the message to all my colleagues. And uh, if you are a senior position, become a mentor. Encourage the youngsters to come forward. If you are the junior level, please follow the senior, try to come up. This is what message on this occasion of the IDMP I would like to give and uh, hope uh, the all the. And now I think we can open anybody from the uh, participant can unmute and want to ask and participate in decision, uh, discussion one by one. They can do, I think so. And there is one question that I will answer. Uh, somebody has asked about the low dose radiotherapy, Venkatraman. I will do it once uh, we have some. Uh, any questions from the floor and the participant and the participation of the uh, participant in this discussion. So anybody want to uh, participate in the discussion, just uh, unmute and uh, go ahead. Anybody? Okay, nobody's come forward, I think. So just uh, there is a question from uh, Venkat Raman, why not implement the low-dose radiotherapy for COVID-19? And uh, your paper, which is there, uh, the uh, letter to the editor we have seen. See, one thing is very, very important is that uh, the coronavirus is not going to be killed by the low dose. For killing a virus or bacteria, we need kilogram doses. The doses which we are going to give for a low dose radiotherapy for a COVID-19 pneumonia is anti-inflammatory agent and not the killing of any virus or damaging any virus. And therefore, this was tried during 1930s and 40s when antibiotics were not there and they got a good result. Now, COVID-induced pneumonia where choking and inflammation takes place of the areoles, the low-level radiation can trigger and uh, uh, bring down the inflammation and uh, what we call as the storm is stopped. So that is results have come and almost about 10, 15 clinical trials across the world are going. But the problem is that when already uh, in Asian countries, number of cancer patients waiting for radiotherapy is a huge number. And now when you take a COVID positive patient for a treatment on a teletherapy machine, then you are denying a treatment for a cancer patient everything because you have to isolate, then disinfect the machine and the time, and there are chances of infection. Therefore, uh, there is uh, in 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 countries where already machines are overloaded, this kind of uh, uh, trial or treatment uh, uh, is. Uh, uh, difficult, but some countries where you have uh, or you have to have a special machine uh, only for COVID pneumonia treatment, yes, they can be done. Uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, articles coming and you can see uh, just recently published uh, Medical Physics World also uh, about the trials and this yesterday it has come out a uh, number of trials about the top pros and cons things. So still anybody uh, from the participant want to speak, uh, they can or they are, they are putting. Okay, some questions they are putting it. As a student, it is hard to get practical knowledge during the pandemic, your suggestion. Yes, now uh, uh, online learning education, yes, very good, we can do. But as a professional, uh, practical training, uh, uh, we need. There are some uh, some demo uh, things, but still then we need it. And that is how now the pandemic, now more and more uh, 
hospitals, uh, more and more institutions are opening up. And now uh, we have to work uh, uh, double time, more time to do the practical and get the knowledge and things. Another question is there, what is your opinion about the job opportunities for young physicists? Is there a guideline for minimum salary to the medical physicists? Now, uh, yes, there are tremendous job potentials, I will tell you. And as I talked about uh, the uh, technological explosion, IAEA has brought out the document that uh, per machine, per number of patients, how many mandatory medical physicists, even in radiotherapy, even in diagnosis, they are about the salary. Uh, it uh, uh, for a government hospital, a government system, yes, they have a cadre and they have a salary system for all the employees accordingly there can be. But uh, for a private hospital, it is depends upon the demand and supply and your skills, your this thing. Uh, it is always how much knowledge is power, skill is a power, knowledge is a dollar. So how much knowledge, skills, and how much important you are for the institution, your salary will depend upon that, that for a private institution. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I have a question for uh, Professor uh, Anupama Azhari. As we all know, IDMP signifies the contribution of a women in medical physics. So, as an as an a leading uh, leading lady in a form region, how much it was difficult for you to um, take a lead in a form region and go forward and implement uh, the medical physics education criteria and set up in Bangladesh. As we all know, in a form region, we are in a region where women are not very encouraged to be in a leadership position. We do not find lots of mentors to go forward. So what's your opinion in that? Thank you, Rosni. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is a very nice uh, things that say, uh, as a women, we always facing difficulties, not like uh, Bangladesh and other developing countries. Women has a very little chance from the, on behalf of also family for the higher education. This is the main things. After 12 class, we are thinking that uh, university education is little bit problematic, but now that this, can, this hurdle we can uh, overcome, but medical physics education we could not overcome mm -hmm. because medical physics is a very new terms to the families and they know this uh, there are uh, no job uh, uh, is not no much so much many jobs are there and also they are thinking of uh, aware of the radiations so many things we could talk with the families their guardians so we have seen that many ideas uh, we are developing to go to the uh, increase the women uh, contribution in this education first. We have to think, take, uh, bring more women in this education. So we have to work. If this is the same thing, I just must uh, emphasize with Professor Orun that animals has many roles. Animals should go to awareness because this awareness program is very effective when you go to the plus 12 classes people, science people who are the good in physics and math, you have to recognize them, you have to talk with them individually, globally, and also to know this, what can opportunities as a women have, because we have many struggles on these things. And after that, when we see that after completion of the master's course, they do not go for the jobs, they got, uh, you know, in India also, many after uh, family, they do not want to continue these hospitals jobs. They think we uh, should not go for a, so like a clerking job or any other jobs, not in the hospitals because that is more laborious job. They have to stay more time here. And this is one thing. And another thing is leadership. Leadership should be grown up like uh, from us because we should not know how to go like Eva's presentation shows very clearly that what is the thing, what are the steps and because the guideline is very necessary for the younger generation. If we do not know, then they are just like in a uh, sea, they are just climbing, they are just uh, running, 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 but they don't know what to reach, where, how to reach and what is our actual positions and goal. So we are the people who give them dreams to the younger generations 
as well as we always know that without educations we cannot make the medical physicists so there are step by step working from each steps of corners from the society from the people we have to work we give more uh, Need more women medical physicists for the gender balance because in our country also other uh, government has announced that there should be more women empowerment in the in every professions and every uh, there is a balance so we should think of these things and and also i told that our male partners and male colleagues that they should also come forward to these things so we can work together to make a more balanceable uh, professionals in this area thank you Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we will definitely take a note on that and try to implement that. So uh, now we have a universal rule that every good thing comes to an end. So now I request um, all of you to have your concluding remarks on the program. So now I start with Professor Eva as uh, she's available with us. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Excellent. Uh, well, I think the, considering the vastness of our region and the population, the services of medical physics will be hugely required and the number of medical physicists as well as the equipment and the complexity of the equipment that it's coming in all areas, radiotherapy, nuclear medicine and radiology, will put a huge demand on highly qualified and very smart medical physicists. So I think that this is a opportunity as well as challenge that we have to embrace and ensure that we are targeting smart young people at the universities, both scientists, physicists and engineers to get on the pathway of medical physics and also lobby with the governments to ensure uh, fair working conditions for medical physicists to ensure uh, proper educational and qualification pathways and also to ensure sufficient remuneration for the degree of complexity that medical physicists have to tackle during their studies as well as in the workplace. You know, the, the amount of years that we have to study is comparable to medical professions, yet there could be a very vast difference in the salary monetary remuneration between the two professions. So I think the governments have to realize that without medical physicists, they cannot deliver safe diagnosis and safe treatment of patients. So we have to be, again, very proactive with lobbying governments in our individual countries. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Now we can have concluding remarks from uh, Professor Anupama. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Yes, now the same thing we have to, we have uh, recognized already from IEA, WHO and the ILO as a health professionals. So our slogan is medical physicists as a health professional. So we must keep in mind wherever we are working, what that is not a matter, but we should go to the government to make us as a recognition. Nation. And this is very important things and only this can be active only when the NMOs are the actives, no members, not maybe the XCOM is not active, but any member should realize these things, they should go first and do these things. This is, this is the first and foremost thing, otherwise we cannot implement this medical physicist in radiology, radiotherapy as a proper way and not can ensure the better quality treatment. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now, uh, Professor Chauvely. Uh, thank you, Rajini. Let me thank on behalf of AFORM to Yuha Bezak for giving time and uh, presenting her talk. Also to Anupama and Taisuk. That is what, there are some questions people are asking. And then what Eva has said, without pain, there is no gain. 
just sitting in a in front of the computer treatment planning system or somewhere you think that research can happen and things will shower on you and somebody will uh, uh, award you so many things it is not possible the level of commitment has to be there i will just tell one example taisuk has to rush because of his family problem and has to leave to us but he ensured that his presentation his talk recorded everything he did it that is a level of commitment a profession and things needs a commitment without the commitment it is impossible always and always the education never stops learning never stops and you have to continue to learn acquire the skills and everything so the people who are working in this dynamism and uh, that's what i thank eva thank anupama and others and i will tell you from my experience from my own department rajni is here now making any activity successful is not a simple and easy task they have worked day and night they have seen and as you know technology may time something i told about that uh, internet may not may be down or things and then recording all the sleepless nights and every moment that will it work or not and that tension with that they have worked and we are talking about the women i will tell you 75% women in my department and they are not i'm not favoring them they are much more hard workers and <laughs> very nicely despite of every or and all any job you give will they will try to accomplish that job and that is what is needed a mentor can be, see there can be a leader but there has to be supporting hands also and that is works in both way so i will appeal and whatever people are listening and forwarding that how it can be done research and this thing see it's a continuous process there are plenty of opportunities i will tell you there are plenty of organization funding giving providing but if you have to come out of uh, your uh, boundaries and things and then only it is possible so all people have put in lot of effort i thank them all people have joined in large number more than 100 participant they were there despite of many program same time happening across the world and in apom region but they have joined they have actively participated so thanks to them and i think collectively combinedly 1 plus 1 becomes 11 we definitely and as i tell told you that had this apom wouldn't have been there our uh, uh, the uh, founding members wouldn't have thought about this thing we wouldn't have been here the platform has been created we have to go on adding the thing so everybody can contribute first contribute and then demand what you are expected to definitely i will think the medical physics has a very very bright future i am a very optimistic person see sky is blue everywhere there will be difficulties it is not that us doesn't have or australia doesn't have every country has its own problem and own this thing so we have to find the solution work on that thing the success is yours but unless and until you plan execute dream it it is not going to be possible and again abdul salam what he has said scientist the their work is the research and things so you enjoy this thing and i will say health profession is a noble profession we are involved in teaching and healthcare so so pious job we are doing so we should contribute we should go ahead and give a helping hand to our younger generation younger colleagues will definitely do with this thing thanking each one of they may be uh, seeing them but there are many people in the background they have worked to make this uh, successful i thank them all the opportunity the platform which is given i am trying from my level there may be some shortcoming 
please please write me call me and ask me that okay this is to be done needed we will definitely try to do within our resources our limitation whatever possible with this thing i thank you all and then i think uh, i and with rajini thanking you very much uh, uh, doing a wonderful job with the team and this thing uh, uh, back to you to come sir thank you very much sir it's it's not a secret that you are a you are a kind of a inspiring leader and mentor to all the young medical faces especially to women so uh, any women medical faces who need help or uh, want to break a stereotype they can always go forward and contact professor chogle as he is in the oh, any medical faces is not only women <laughs> yeah especially because people do not encourage women medical faces too much but he is open to all so at last on the concluding note i would say uh, what i have uh, concluded from all the talks is that uh, try to have a vision don't be in a box try to be a uh, whatever role you will take uh, whether it's a leader or whether it's a follower try to be your at, uh, try to be at your best because if you follow in a best manner you can learn to be a leader in a best manner and once you feel that you are confident enough break the stereotypes go forward and lead the younger ones and have your own team and try to have a multi dimensional uh, thinking try, try to open your horizons and go forward multi this medical physics give us an ample opportunity we are fortunate enough that this field has lots of potential for new things we are not binded it's not a very conventional field so we can do a lot so at last i want to thank all of you um, all all the speakers all the uh, participants for uh, informative talks and such an active participation and at the last i want to wish you once again a very happy international day of medical physics so um, i wish you a very safe and happy um, life ahead so now we have to uh, wind up the program so once again thank you all thank you very much for joining us thank you all thank you all all the best all the best see you thank you